In the Scara ERP, your users may attempt to create transactions that demand more stock than you currently have in your inventory, or demand stock quantities different from the quantity that was previously agreed upon in a linked document. Such actions, if allowed, can lead to negative quantities in your inventory stocks. This video shows how to configure the system's tolerance and response to such actions. You need to be logged in with an administrator account. On the menu to the left, expand System, Preferences, and click System Controls. The Account Preferences tab pops up, and under the Accounting sub-tab, look for the section called Negative Stock. Delivery orders, sales orders, cash or credit sales, and purchase returns are the types of transactions or modules that could cause negative stocks. If a user tries to key in a quantity greater than your current inventory stock, for example, in a sales order, he keys in 12 units of your product when there's only 10 left in stock, which will leave your inventory with negative 2 stock, then the system will react in one of three ways based on what you select here. The system could ignore the fact that negative stocks will occur and thus let the user save the record as per normal. Or the system could block the user from creating the record by telling him that it's not allowed. Or the system could warn the user that negative stocks would occur and let the user ultimately decide whether or not to proceed with saving the record. If you want to prevent negative stocks from occurring in your inventory from here on out, then untick the Activate Negative Stock for Location Warehouse checkbox. As a result, all the Block options will be selected for all these transaction types, and all the Ignore and Warn options will be unselectable. Note that products that are already negative in quantity will remain so but any transaction that would lower the stock quantity further into the negative will be blocked. Otherwise, tick the checkbox to allow negative stocks, and as a result, all the Ignore and Warn options are available for selection, and all the Block options will be unselectable. One thing to note is that if you successfully create a sales order, sales invoice, or cash or credit order, then your total inventory quantity does not change because these transactions don't correspond to inventory leaving your warehouse. This can be an issue if you intend to block negative stocks, but the system only checks the total inventory quantity to calculate if negative stocks will occur, because it's still possible to create two or more of such transactions whose combined quantities are more than your current inventory stock. And if they progress into transactions that correspond to inventory stock leaving your warehouse, such as delivery orders, then one of them will be blocked, and until you procure more inventory, you won't be able to deliver its product quantities. This is why for sales orders, there's an additional section called Formula for Negative Stock Calculations, where you can choose this option to make negative stock be based on the total inventory quantity, or this option to make negative stock be based on leftover inventory quantities that have not yet been used in any sales order. If you select the latter option, then when your users create a new sales order, the in-stock quantity that they see for a product in the line item section will be the leftover quantity that isn't used by other sales orders. And if negative stocks are blocked for sales orders, then it's impossible to key in a number higher than the in-stock quantity, even if the number is lower than the total inventory quantity for the product. The same goes for cash or credit sales, except the leftover quantity would mean the stock quantity that has not been used in other cash or credit sales. If you select the former option for sales orders, you can still safeguard against creating multiple sales orders whose combined quantities exceed your total inventory quantity, and that is by getting your users to tick the Block Quantity checkbox every time they create a sales order. However, that's a topic for another video. Delivery orders and purchase returns don't have these options because they already result in inventory leaving your warehouse, which naturally prevents your users from creating subsequent transactions that require more stock than you currently have. 
These two options that read allow to enter quantity greater than linked document quantity, normal linking or cross linking, let you choose whether or not your users can key in quantities that exceed previously agreed upon quantities found in linked documents. Normal linking refers to linking documents within the same workflow. For example, a delivery order being linked to a sales order, both of which are transactions belonging to the same workflow which is the sales cycle. If the option is unticked, then your users cannot key in a delivery order quantity greater than the original sales order quantity. Your users are still allowed to change the delivery quantity to something less than the original sales order quantity, but not without receiving a warning pop-up first. Cross-linking refers to documents from different workflows being linked together. For example, a vendor quotation being linked to a customer quotation. If the option is unticked, then your users cannot quote the customer a quantity greater than the original quantity specified in the linked vendor quotation. Your users are still allowed to change the quotation quantity to something less than the original vendor quotation quantity, but again, not without receiving a warning pop-up first. Those are all the settings for controlling negative stocks. All that's left now is to click save. That's all and thanks for watching.